The Blome and Voss BV-141 is one of the strangest aircraft ever flown in World War II, an asymmetric reconnaissance platform that looked more like an engineering mistake than a military plane. With a huge glass cockpit pod offset to one side and an engine mounted on the other, it defied every rule of aerodynamic balance. And yet, to the shock of many, it flew beautifully. In this documentary, we uncover the story behind this bizarre machine. Why German engineers built it, how it performed in the air, why its design made sense despite its looks, and why it ultimately disappeared from the war before it ever had a chance to prove itself. Aviation in the 1930s was dominated by symmetry, with engineers assuming that any imbalance would lead to uncontrollable flight behavior. But Dr. Richard Voigt of Blohm and Voss challenged that entire foundation by proposing a reconnaissance plane with its crew placed far off-center. His radical idea shocked the German aviation community, yet it promised unmatched visibility for battlefield observation. This concept required courage to even propose, let alone build. The problem Voigt aimed to solve was visibility. Traditional planes always obstructed the observer's view with engines, frames, or fuselage panels. By offsetting the cockpit pod, the observer gained a full panoramic sweep of the ground below. This made reconnaissance more efficient and safer for crews who relied heavily on situational awareness. It was a bold way to solve a long-standing design limit. The engine placement on the left side aligned with the wing structure, while the observer pod on the right balanced weight distribution. Engineers calculated every component's mass to maintain aerodynamic neutrality. What looked insane to outsiders was actually supported by precise engineering logic. Even critics admitted the theory behind it was solid. Wind tunnel tests were surprisingly positive. Aerodynamic evaluations showed that asymmetry could be countered through subtle control surface adjustments. The BV-141 proved that balance didn't always depend on symmetry, it depended on smart engineering. This gave Blohm and Voss confidence to build a full prototype. When the aircraft rolled onto the airfield, pilots mocked it for looking like a crashed plane that had been reassembled wrong. But after the first test flights, many of those same pilots walked away stunned. They discovered that it behaved like a normal aircraft despite its peculiar shape. The laughter quickly turned into respect. The Luftwaffe, impressed by these results, pushed the project into further development stages. Internal reports praised its strange but effective design. Germany had accidentally created one of the most unconventional yet functional aircraft in the war. The BV-141's first flight shocked even its creators. It accelerated straight, rotated smoothly, and climbed without any unusual tendencies. Pilots expected unpredictable yaw or roll moments but instead found the controls calm and stable. It behaved like an aircraft that ignored its own weird appearance. This was a major validation for Voigt's engineering. Visibility from the cockpit was unrivaled. The large glass pod offered a nearly unobstructed 360-degree view, ideal for artillery spotting, convoy tracking, and ground intelligence gathering. No Allied or Axis aircraft offered such clarity. Observers described the experience as sitting in a floating observation tower. This advantage alone made the BV-141 strategically valuable. Its flight characteristics remained consistently positive across all tests. Turns were smooth, stalls were predictable, and control forces were surprisingly low. Pilots compared it favorably to contemporary reconnaissance aircraft like the FW-189. Many admitted they forgot they were flying an asymmetric aircraft at all. It was that well-balanced. Engineers continued improving each prototype adding stronger engines, more refined aerodynamics, and improved structural strength. The BMW 801 engine significantly boosted performance but became harder to obtain due to wartime shortages. Each newer version proved more capable than the last. Progress was steady and promising. 
the Luftwaffe became increasingly confident in the aircraft's potential. Reconnaissance doctrines on the Eastern Front stressed visibility and endurance, both of which the BV-141 excelled at. Internal reports called it one of the most successful experimental aircraft Germany had tested. Expectations were high for a production order. Sadly, despite its success, a rival aircraft already had control of Germany's reconnaissance role. The BV-141 was performing well, but politics and production momentum were about to crush its future. No amount of innovation could fight the system. The biggest threat to the BV-141 wasn't performance or design. It was the Focke-Wulf FW-189, which had already been accepted as the Luftwaffe's standard reconnaissance plane. Factories were producing it in large numbers, and crews were already trained on it. Switching to a new aircraft meant delays Germany couldn't afford. Wartime production favored familiarity, not experimentation. With full assembly lines already operating, the Luftwaffe saw no reason to disrupt the established workflow. Even though the BV-141 offered superior visibility, the bureaucracy prioritized logistical stability. Engineers knew this decision wasn't about capability. It was about convenience. The project was trapped by its arrival timing. Engine shortages made matters worse. The BMW 801 engine needed for the improved BV-141 was the same one used in frontline fighters and bombers like the FW-190 and Ju-88. These aircraft consumed every available engine, leaving none for experimental projects. The BV-141 was handicapped by a war economy stretched to its limit. Political inertia inside Germany's aviation ministry further doomed the plane. Decision-makers were afraid of approving a design so unconventional. They worried about criticism if it failed, so they chose the safer, more traditional option. Bureaucracy killed innovation long before combat could ever test it. The project ended with only a handful of prototypes built. Despite impressive performance, none entered operational service. Test pilots and engineers were disappointed but powerless. The BV-141 simply didn't fit into the Luftwaffe's narrow wartime priorities. In an alternate timeline, the BV-141 could have revolutionized battlefield observation. But in the real world, it became another victim of wartime politics rather than technical failure. This potential was lost to history. The BV-141 remains one of aviation's greatest paradoxes an aircraft that looked incapable of flight yet performed beautifully. Engineers and historians still study it as proof that innovation often comes from breaking rules. The aircraft challenged deeply held assumptions about symmetry and stability. Its existence is a triumph of creativity. Its asymmetric airflow and thrust lines showed that aircraft didn't need to conform to traditional layouts to fly correctly. In some conditions, the BV-141 even outperformed symmetrical aircraft. Test pilots praised its responsiveness and stability during reconnaissance maneuvers. The plane was far more elegant than its shape suggested. Observers inside the large glass pod enjoyed unmatched downward and lateral visibility. This made reconnaissance far more effective, allowing crews to spot enemy positions, track troop movements, and photograph targets with remarkable precision. No other aircraft provided such a transparent workspace. It was uniquely suited for observation roles. Engineers discovered that asymmetry could create aerodynamic advantages rather than disadvantages. By carefully positioning mass and control surfaces, they balanced forces that would normally cause instability. This made the BV-141 an engineering case study for decades afterward. Its design still appears in aerospace textbooks today. The unconventional layout drastically reduced vibration inside the observation pod, enhancing the accuracy of cameras and instruments. This increased mission efficiency and reduced observer fatigue. 
The cockpit environment was unusually comfortable for a World War II reconnaissance aircraft. The offset layout was more beneficial than critics expected. The BV-141 proved that unconventional ideas are sometimes the most effective solutions. While it never saw full production, its design philosophy continues to influence experimental aviation. Engineers still view it as a breakthrough that arrived before the world was ready. It remains a testament to bold thinking. Today, the BV-141 is remembered as one of the boldest and strangest experiments in military aviation history. Its silhouette remains instantly recognizable and often sparks disbelief among those seeing it for the first time. Aviation museums and historians consider it a milestone in aeronautical innovation. Its rarity only adds to its legend. Although no complete example survives, photos, wreckage fragments, and technical documents continue to fascinate researchers. The aircraft represents a crossroads between creativity and practicality in wartime design. Models and replicas keep its memory alive among enthusiasts. Its story continues to inspire curiosity. The BV-141's downfall highlights the harsh reality that great engineering is not always rewarded. Politics, timing, and resource shortages often overshadow technical success. The aircraft performed well but lacked the support needed to become operational. This fate was determined by factors outside the engineer's control. The plane's unconventional design later influenced asymmetric concepts in both manned and unmanned aviation. Its aerodynamic lessons proved valuable to engineers studying stability in unconventional shapes. This contribution endures long after the aircraft disappeared. Its influence is subtle but real. In retrospect, the BV-141 arrived at the wrong moment in history. Had circumstances been different, it might have become one of the most effective reconnaissance tools of World War II. Instead, it became an icon of what might have been. The potential was undeniable but unrealized. The BV-141 teaches a powerful truth. Innovation thrives when rules are challenged. This bizarre aircraft stands as proof that even the strangest ideas can fly, and sometimes fly brilliantly. Its legacy is a reminder that genius often looks like madness at first sight.